Hi, I'm Mr. Ish and I welcome you to this video here on limits for high school math students. Chances are that half of you watching this video will go on to study calculus and go above that level. And then if you do, then the subject on limits will be among the first that you will be studying. Limit subject is not a tricky one to understand, but usually it's taught in a less than ideal manner. So it ends up being confusing for students. When we're talking about limit, what is exactly that we're studying? We're basically studying in a nutshell exactly this how does a function behave at a particular point in time and you can usually express that sentence right here limit as x your domain values your x-axis values approach a specific value which is again on your x-axis within your domain or perhaps outside your domain as these x-axis values approach this particular x-axis value what does your function do how does it approach here in terms of the range and that's exactly what you're looking at what is the range or the output of your function as you look at this in terms of your input? For most functions, it's a rather straightforward analysis. If supposedly you have a function which looks like this, it looks like a parabolic function. Imagine it starts from right over here, 0, 1, and then it shoots up over here. And the question is limit as x values approach 2, what does your function, which here happens to have a certain equation, you can imagine this equation to be x squared plus 1. As these x values approach 2, what does your function approach? For these type of questions, it's easy because you're looking at this first. You're looking at this 2. Is this 2 value 2 in the domain of that function? It is. Here's 0, here's 1, here's 2. It's in the domain because it actually falls within the values you're seeing. If you're to look at this graph over here, the function over here, it has a domain, you know, from 0 up to infinity as you're seeing it graphed and two is very easily seen in this. If a specific value you're trying to evaluate for your function in terms of a limit falls in that domain, just plug this value right in here and whatever you get is your answer. When you plug two right over here, x squared plus one, you're getting a four plus one, your value here would be a five. And that would not be a difficult concept to understand, especially for this instance, where the value a, this a value, is in the domain of the function you're evaluating. The problems arise normally when the function it is you're evaluating, the a value is not in that domain, then what do you do? Let me show you two instances of that particular situation, what can happen, what can arise. Take a look at a graph which looks something like this, and we have over here x equals 2, it's a vertical asymptote. You have a function which comes like this and it goes and it shoots up in that direction. On this side you have a function which comes on this side and it shoots and it goes over here. We don't know what the function is, but the function is nothing more than f of x. Now we're trying to show you some of the peculiarities of limits. This limit could be looked at in two different question forms. Limit as x approaches 2, but you're approaching 2 here from the left side. You see here's my x equals 2, my vertical asymptote x equals 2. You can approach it from the left. In that instance, you're writing this with a negative sign as a exponent. And then limit as x approaches 2 from the right. You're approaching this value 2 right here, value 2 from the right. Hence, you're going to put a positive sign over here. What does your function equal? What does it approach? We don't have an equation here for function, but it doesn't matter. When you're looking at this equation, this function as it's approaching this x value of 2, which happens to be a vertical asymptote, your function shoots upwards, and you know it shoots up right here towards the direction of positive infinity, because it's going out of bounds. When you're looking at this particular function right here, as it's approaching x-axis value of 2 from the right, your function ends up shooting down and going outside bounds, but here your answer is minus infinity. Now you're looking at this and you're seeing the same number over here, you're seeing the same number over here, you just are approaching the same number from two different sides. And then you're seeing something over here based on the direction left, that this right here is your left hand limit, left hand, meaning your left hand. And then you're looking here, everything from the right side, and this right here is your right hand limit. You're approaching and evaluating the function in terms of the limit from the right hand side and from the left hand side and you're seeing a different answer for both right hand and left hand. When the right hand and the left hand values are not same, then that leads to a very good situation for a limit in general. And let me show you that. Allow me to erase this. Let me show you what I'm talking about. 
you see how for this particular limit and this function we're looking at it from the right and we're looking at it from in from the left what if someone were to ask you for this particular same function which i had graphed for you your function in terms of the limit was this right here two there's no plus there's no minus which means you're just evaluating at two what would you do then then you would look right here does the left hand limit equal the right hand limit does it or not it did not it did not equal because the left hand and the right hand limits are two different numbers you have positive infinity and minus infinity and they're not the same then you must say that d and e your limit does not exist the two-sided limit does not exist for limit as x approaches two the two-sided limit does not exist d and e but for this particular function which i graphed for you right here it was going this way and then it was going this way one-sided limits exist on the left side the limit goes and your function goes towards positive infinity from the right hand side your function dips down towards minus infinity so uh, there are questions out there like i showed you the very first example with the parabola where it's very straightforward you just plug in the value because that value happened to be in the domain remember as x approached a that a was in that domain here we have x approached a right here which was 2 2 is not in the domain of this function because 2 represents a vertical asymptote when a value is in a vertical asymptote it is not part of your domain it's outside the domain of your function because your function will never touch this vertical asymptote it will come near it then it will graze along it towards the direction of infinity then there are these instances where i've told you where the limit does not exist in general because the right side left hand limits are not the same but individually you have one-sided limits the left side and the right hand limits can be evaluated and you are beginning to understand this concept now of one-sided and two-sided limits let me show you examples of one-sided limits these are one-sided limits that you should be aware of one-sided limits and you know this you just have probably never thought about it limit as x approaches zero your function is natural log x what happens to that you know by now that the graph of the natural log is this we have one comma zero because when you do a natural log of one you get a zero do a natural log one on your calculator you get a zero your graph looks something like this it never you cannot do a natural log of a zero you cannot do a natural log of negatives but this right here is a classic example of a one-sided limit and to be even more clear you should be putting this because you know the natural log is not seen on this side you can only approach this x value here of zero from the right limit as x approaches zero from the right what does your natural log function approach you always look over here in terms of your range values which are your y values your function is approaching here towards the direction of minus infinity because as you're getting closer and closer to zero your natural log is getting more and more negative in terms of the direction of negative infinity so your answer here is minus infinity and it's an excellent example of a one-sided limit there's another example you might want to consider for a one-sided limit. Let me show you. Limit as x is approaching 0 from the right, we have root x. When you know you graph root x, which is a function, it looks something like this. It's starting here from 0, and then it's going in the direction of infinity, but you can see there's no involvement here of the negative x values. You can't do negative and then take a radical. You'll have an imaginary number come out of it. When you're looking at this clearly, you can only approach this value 0, the origin 0, 0, but the x-axis value here, the a, the x approaching a, this x value of 0 can only be approached from the right. You can't approach it on the left because there is no aspect of the domain which is looking at negative x values. It starts from 0, including 0, and then it goes only towards positive x values. Here you know clearly what your answer is. It's 0. You can just plug 0 right here. You're doing root of a 0 and it's 0, and it's truly one-sided. This right here would be a right-sided limit. But for any other value right here in this domain, you can easily take a value 200. Limit as x approaches 100. You can do root x. You can easily do root 100 and you get 10. Here your value would be 100, 10 in terms of the value on your curve. The 100 represent the x value, the 10 representing the output. The output meaning the value here as the limit is evaluated for that function. And you could clearly and easily evaluate this part, x equals 100, from both the right and the left. As x approaches 100 from the right, as x approaches 100 from the left, you can easily get a value close to 10, and I'll show you how you can do that. You'll get in both instances a value which will be equal to 10. 
and why would that be the case because a, very, a value very close to 100 on the right side would be 100.001 or it could be 101 in both instances when you do square root of this you're getting a value close to 10 a value towards the left of 100 very close to 100 would be like a value 99 you can do a square root of 99 you can do square root of 98 you can do square root of 99.99 all of these values as you approach the 100 and you do their roots you're getting a value close to 10 and therefore you can assume in all instances from the right from the left the output is always 10 and you can see right side values are close to 100 left side values here are close to 100 they're not exactly 100 but they're very close to it but the outputs are always close to and or equal to 10. So this right here would be an instance where the right hand and the left hand limits are equal. They're equal in all instances for any value here in the domain of this root x. Let me show you another very good example and this is very comprehensive example because it covers a lot. We look at this e to the x. I won't put anything over here just yet because we have a graph of e to the x. You know it's a 0 comma 1 y intercept and it goes like this. There are three areas where you can evaluate this limit. One right over here. You can technically evaluate it anywhere because the domain is minus infinity infinity. For the purposes of this specific example, we'll evaluate it at three areas. One right here, one right here, and one right here. And all of these areas I'm evaluating are in terms of x values. Let's look at the first example. Limit as x approaches zero. As x values approach zero, because you know zero, when you put e to the x, you do e to the zero, you get one. Whether you're approaching e to the x from the right, whether you're approaching e to the x from the left, in terms of the value zero, your output it will always be one. And here your answer will always be one because here you can literally put zero right in place of here, e to the power zero and you'll get one. You can even evaluate it from the right side and you can evaluate it from the left side and the answers in both instances are one. As x axis values go towards zero, your function is still zero comma one in terms of the output and towards zero from the left, it's still one in terms of the output. In all instances, the right hand and the left hand limits are equal to each other and they are indeed. So as in general, x approaches zero, you have a good output and that right there is one. Now let me show you what happens at infinity and minus infinity. When you're approaching the same limit question here, limit as x approaches infinity, e to the x, what happens? As you're approaching these values of infinity, you're going out there and you're looking at infinity, you know infinity is in the domain of function right here because it has a domain minus infinity to infinity. You can be approaching it from the left and from the right, but it would be difficult to approach it because you don't know what infinity really represents. It's a very large number, but you don't know what's exactly to the left of it and what's exactly to the right of it. In that instance, you can just do e to the infinity and your answer is infinity. Limit as x approaches infinity, your function approaches infinity, your y values become increasingly large here towards the direction of infinity. What about right here towards the direction of minus infinity? Again, minus infinity is a very large negative number. You cannot look at it from either the right from the left because you don't know what's exactly to the right and what's exactly to the left of minus infinity. But again, it's in the domain of e to the x. Therefore, you can just do e to the minus infinity. You can just literally plug this in right over here, which is one over e to the infinity, which is zero. And this limit here explains why your function always never crosses x-axis, but it tries to get very close to it and why the x-axis serves as a good horizontal asymptote. Because of this limit over here, you can understand that. But both of these limits are both right hand and left hand limits. You're just not looking at right hand, left hand limits simply because these a values here are very large and very difficult to comprehend like what's exactly to the right, what's exactly to the left. So you just plug them in and you get exactly what your answer is and that right there represents your limit. There are some limit questions out there which are very easy. Look at this limit as x approaches pi sine x. What happens with this function right here? Generally, you can just substitute this value right here and you just do sine of pi and you'll get zero and your answer would be right. Normally for trigonometric functions, for polynomials, for trigonometric functions, for radical functions, and for rational functions, you can generally get away with just plugging in this a value right over here into your function. Whatever it is that you get, that usually is your answer. This right here is usually the direct substitution property of limits where you can just plug in that a value into your function, whatever your output is, is exactly your limit answer, the direct substitution property of limits. 
applies to polynomials, trigonometric functions, radicals, rational functions. Generally speaking, it applies to them. And you could even have done this by means of a graph. If you do the sine function graph, just a limited domain, 0, pi, and 2 pi, you can approach this value here. This is as x is approaching pi. You can approach it from the left, you can approach it from the right. In all instances here, your value in terms of y is 0, comma 0. Your output is 0, and hence it is limit as x approaches pi from the left. Limit as x approaches pi from the right, your output is the same. Your left hand limit and right hand limits are equal. Therefore, you can say in general, x approaching pi is always equal to zero and that question is done. So some questions are out there very easy and you can just directly substitute your a value into your function, your output, whatever it is you get, is your answer for that limit question. This is just like a general introduction to limits for high school math students. Let me just end this video with this one last question. Limit as x approaches 0, we have 1 over x. What do we do over here? You know this right here represents a reciprocal function which looks something like this and it looks something like this. You know what the domain is. You have minus infinity coming up to 0 but then you jump across zero up to infinity, you have a vertical as in toward here, x equals zero. It's not, zero is not in the domain of this one or x because of the presence of this vertical as in toward. You also have horizontal as in toward right here, your x axis, but we're looking here at vertical as in toward. Limit as x approaches zero, one or x, what happens? Well, here's my zero in terms of x axis value. What is happening if you're approaching zero from the right side? limit as x is approaching 0 from the right. Your function is going up over here towards what? It's going up here towards the direction of positive infinity. That's exactly what you're having. But what about limit as x approaches 0 from the left? As you're approaching these x values from the left towards this 0, where does your function go? You trace it and it goes right here towards the direction of minus infinity. Right here. That's your answer. This right here represents your right hand limit. This is your left hand limit. Are the right hand and the left hand limits the same? No, they're not. They're not the same. Therefore, in general, as x approaches 0, your limit for this function does not exist because the only way a function can have a limit at a particular point, the right hand and the left hand limits must be equal. If they're not equal, the limit does not exist, especially for limits that are two-sided. This is a two-sided limit. But at this particular value, the function does not have a limit. It does not exist. But you could have picked any other point, And for that point, the limit would have existed right here. Limit as x approaches 10. You know if x value here is 10, your output here would be 10, 1 over 10. You put 10 into your function, you get 1 over 10. Now in this instance, your function will have an output as x approaches 10. It will be 1 over 10. And this will be true for the right hand and the left hand. As your function approaches in terms of x values towards 10 from the right and towards from the left, your answer will be the same because this value 10 clearly falls in the domain. If a value clearly falls in the domain right here, 10 is right here in the domain, you will have the same answer. 1 over 10 from the right, 1 over 10 from the left, the right hand equals the left hand, therefore this function has a limit at x equaling and approaching 10. So you have to keep that in mind. Lastly, let's look at one last thing for this particular function right here. Limit as x approaches infinity and limit as x approaches minus infinity. When you're looking at these type of things, you don't have to do right side, left side, because it's difficult to comprehend a right number and a left number immediately to the right and left of positive or minus infinity. You can't because it's conceptually difficult to understand what these are you're out here in the zone of infinity where this function is. Does this function have a limit as x approaches infinity? It certainly does because infinity falls in the domain of this reciprocal function. You just do one over infinity and it's zero. It zeroes out due to the presence of this horizontal asymptote. What about as x approaches minus infinity? Well, you look right over here. In this direction right here, your function is approaching your horizontal asymptote, the x-axis. So you, you can literally put this value right here in 1 over x and you'll have 1 over minus infinity which is still 0. In both of these instances limit as x approaches infinity 1 over x will equal 0. These are right, these are right. And that right there brings us to the end of this particular video. Remember limits are a way of determining how a function behaves at a particular point on your graph or particular point in time. 
for limit to exist, the right hand and the left hand limits must be equal, then the limit exists for those limits which are two-sided. Some limits are generally only one-sided, like I showed you natural log x at x approaches zero. You don't have to do right hand and left hand, but these are the rules over here for two-sided limits, evaluated always based on both sides. And if a value in terms of this a value, x approaching a, this a falls in the domain of that function, just plug it in and you can get an output. That output generally will be your limit answer. If a value is in the domain, you're good. If the value is outside the domain due to a vertical asymptote, then you have some more determination to do as to why it is. Maybe you're gonna go towards infinity or maybe something will happen, but you may not have a limit value at that particular point. And that's it for this particular video. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. Bye.